Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I worked on Tom in pastels. I was asked by a Patreon member to create a tutorial purely focusing on a black cavalier. Tom's photo here was perfect for it, the expression was really really nice. For this one, it's the smallest portrait that I would recommend doing in pastel, so it is a 6 by 8 Now one of the most common things that you may hear online from watching various videos and other artists is that you can't get detail when working smaller scale with pastels. Now that, I believe, that's only true to a degree. As long as you work in a specific way and layer and keep sharp pencils, a light pressure and so on, I do believe that you can still achieve a really good level of realism when you are working smaller. Now when I say it's the smallest portrait, I'm talking about the full like, like a pet portrait so you can see Tom's finished portrait in the corner there so we've got a nice head and shoulder pose and I faded it out at the chest if you were to draw a butterfly for instance and you were to make that butterfly the whole size of the six by eight that would be different that you could get a fair amount of detail on but obviously this is quite a lot of fur and a lot of detail and expression to try and capture on a smaller size but it can be done at the end of the video there is going to be the portrait of Tom at the end so you can see how much detail I've managed to capture. Now yes, working smaller can be more tricky to get details and you do have to make sure you layer correctly as always with any art and any medium that you're working in but more so when you're working smaller. So I will work in small sections as always even when I'm working larger just to make sure that I get that area about 80% complete before I move on to the next. That's just my personal preference on how I like to work. Now, one of the biggest tips I can give you if you are working smaller is to work in light layers, light pressure on that pencil, but also make sure you keep your pencils fairly sharp quite early on. When I'm working larger, I can often get away with using blunter pencils for my base layers. For this, we still we not we need to be more accurate with our base layers and the first initial layers because we are fitting everything in in a much smaller space. So I do tend to work with quite sharp pencils from the start. Now when I'm working on a larger area like the ear here, maybe not so much in terms of the sharpness for the first initial layers, but you can see for the head and the muzzle area, I will keep to a fairly sharp point on my pencils because it is that much of a smaller area. Obviously the surface area of the ears is going to be pretty similar to the surface area of the face but that face contains the eyes, nose, mouth and so on so it's going to all be compressed into a smaller area. Now when you are working smaller the portrait will still need to be given that time that it needs to get it up to that level of realism because as you can see here I am still able to add individual fur strokes and the clumps of the fur to create that illusion of detail even if I can't include every single fur strand. The larger you work, the more detail that you can fit in. Obviously, you've got more of that area to work on. But as you can see, you can still create and replicate that photo to make it look like that dog, even when you are working smaller scale. The two and a half hour full length tutorial went live on Patreon this morning. So if you would like to draw Tom yourself, the reference photo and liner are provided over there. And if you've got any messages about Patreon, then don't hesitate to drop me a message or an email. But I do have a Patreon library over on my website, which is also linked in the description, where it has all my tutorials listed from the full length portraits, the focus tutorials and also the bonus videos as well. They are all listed on my website so that before you sign up, you can have a look and see what tutorials and content are available over there. Now, another thing as well, even though I am working smaller, you can still see I'm using quite a few pencils. I'm not skipping past any stage. I'm trying to make sure I can fit as much detail as I possibly can in each little area, trying to get the most out of that section. Now, when you're working on an area like the muzzle where the fur is softer, you are going to want to give more of the illusion of fur rather than individual fur strokes. You can see on the top of the head here that I've actually managed to get a really good level of detail here despite the smaller area, but the fur is longer, so that's something to bear in mind. When you're drawing the muzzle and when we get to that bit, it's all gonna appear much shorter and therefore softer. So we need to make sure that we replicate that in our like difference in pencil strokes. That's really quite important. Now another reason why it's nice to work on a smaller scale sometimes is because pet portraits and the deadline and the pressure of achieving all those pet portraits that you might have on your waiting list can get a little bit overwhelming. 
I have found since launching Patreon that doing these smaller studies, I've got, you know, I do the dog noses and um, eyes and that sort of thing. They might only take a couple of hours, but they are a really welcome break from the constant pressure of pet portraits. And as I say, always trying to achieve deadlines. Working smaller like this, like the six by eight, is a really nice little project to sit at your easel and think, right, I can get this done in a day and just take that pressure off. So if you do find that you're not in the zone or you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, maybe don't commit to drawing a full portrait of a bigger size. Draw something a little bit smaller, a little focus study maybe, and that usually does then help to get you back into that momentum of wanting to complete more commissions and maybe larger projects. Now the area here on the bridge of the nose is a prime example of what I talk about in terms of we've got a small area but we just want to give the illusion of that detail. We still want to hint at the direction. You can still see here I've got a good number of first strokes. They're going in different directions as they get up to the middle of the head to show that there is that difference in the bridge of the nose. But I am not able to add every single fair detail because of the size of the portrait. However, it's not always needed. Sometimes less is more, and that can certainly be the case when you're working on something like this. Now, when I was sent photos of Tom, I picked this reference photo that I used because of the colours. There were many purples, magentas, could put mortem colours, and it really did show off in his ears. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes in this video, but there were so many colours that I was really wanting to capture to get that warmth and white balance in the reference photo. Now, in my videos here on YouTube and on Patreon, I do talk about colour, saying that it's not as important as your values, and I do believe that. I do reference every single pencil and the colours that I use when I'm using that pencil so that people following along to tutorials can, if they have the same pencils, use the same ones. However, if you don't have a colour and a, the same set as what I'm using, I always reference where I can for instance, a burnt sienna colour, I would then reference that pencil number, but I would say it is a burnt sienna colour or a yellow ochre colour and so on, so that anybody following along can pick up a pencil of a similar colour in their set and still create something that would be almost identical if they followed the same layering process. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because it's one of the most common questions that I'm asked is how do I know what colour to select? Now, I break that up into quite a simple um, way of trying to identify that. I look at my reference photo and the area that I want to draw and I think, right, is that a warm colour or is it a cold colour? And then I limit that down to is it if it is a colder colour, I will go, right, OK, well, is it a lighter version or a darker version of that colour? And that's how I try to break it down. Now, in my Patreon videos, obviously, because it is mostly real time I'm able to explain this a lot more and in depth as I say I tell you the pencil that I'm using at the time and the reasons why I'm using it at the time however if you're following along to any tutorial regardless of whose it is and you don't have the same pencils and the same set you can still create something just as nice and um, it would probably be very very similar the color is not the be all and end all it is the lighting if for instance this same dog was photographed in a sunset, for instance, with all those warmer yellow colours, his colouring would replicate that and change accordingly, but the lighting would still be the main thing that we would need to focus on, not the colour. He could be under a blue fluorescent light, then therefore the fur would have that strong blue reflection, but you would still need to capture the lights and the darks in order to make it realistic. So I know it is something that can be very challenging for many people. So as I say in my Patreon videos, I do make sure I explain why I'm choosing that colour and what colour you could select if you don't have that same pencil. But I also really do focus on the lighting. You can see in the finished portrait that the main light source is coming from the left hand side. You can see here where I'm drawing the top of that left ear is considerably lighter than the right hand side. That's what's going to make this appear that much more 3D rather than the colour. If anybody drawn along to this tutorial decided to add a little bit more orange and red tones to the muzzle and the eyebrows, it would still look like that dog. It would just look like it, the photo was taken at a slightly different time of day, maybe as I say in a sunset type setting. But as long as the lighting is there, that's what's going to make your pet portraits and your artwork appear that much more realistic. Now also on my Patreon channel, I do do a mixture of portraits with pan pastels as base layers, soft pastel sticks as base layers, and just the pencils alone. 
just so that anybody following along who doesn't have all the same materials can still achieve and know how to achieve the same outcome. You'll notice that for this portrait of Tom, I did everything just with my pastel pencils. Now, one of the reasons for that was is because the face area was quite small. So you can be a little bit more careful with your base layers when you're just using your pastel pencils. If I was to use pan pastels or my preferred way of getting my base layers down, which is sanded soft pastel sticks, I would run the risk of going over all my sketch lines because using soft tools, even with the eye makeup applicator shape, it would be tricky to try and keep everything as your base layer stage in the right place and where it needs to be. So working on this size, you know, as I say, six by eight, my preference for base layers would most of the time be as what I've done here and just use my pastel pencils. Now, when you are working this size, I would recommend leaving about an inch from the edge of your paper to the edge of the subject to make sure that you can feel that subject on that piece of paper as best as you can. Now, that is normally my preference, regardless of the size that I'm working on. I like to leave about an inch to an inch and a half from the subject to the edge of the page. That therefore means that when you come to mounting it, it's going to be covered two or three mils on each side and it would still allow a nice amount of paper to be shown and you're not going to potentially have any area of the subject cropped off by the mount. I also, when I'm doing a faded chest area like what I've got here, always like to make sure that there is the equal gap from the top of the head and the top of the paper and the same from the bottom of the chest where it's faded out to the bottom edge of the paper, just to make sure that the whole portrait has a really good balance. So you can see all those colours in the ears that I've captured, all those different layers, really creating that depth and thickness of that fur to give that illusion of that density of all those curls in the ears. And you'll notice that I don't do the whiskers until the very end, once I know that everything underneath it, that where the whiskers are going to overlap, are complete. The last thing you want to be doing is doing your whiskers too soon, because let's face it, we all love doing the whiskers. It's one of my favourite parts about the portrait. But then if you have to draw around them because your base layer is underneath and the detail that you've put underneath is not finished, drawing around them, it will just be a real hassle. So really do avoid that temptation of doing them too soon and leave them right till the very end. So here is the finished portrait of Tom. As I said, this was a six by eight. It was done on dark gray pastel matte paper. And I really do hope that these little tips and techniques in this video is useful. If you like the content that I upload, hit the subscribe and the bell button, and then you'll get notified of future content that I upload. And as I say, if Patreon is of interest, the link to that is in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll be uploading again soon.